So as many of you know, I've been in the, for the past week in Phoenix, Arizona for the Focus Conference. And just so we can answer this question up, right, Father Mike is as nice in person as he is on the videos, Father Mike Schmitz. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you, if, you, if you haven't seen that, you can go ahead and watch a Father Mike Schmitz video and see why everybody kind of likes him. So um, anyways, I, I was at the conference and it was a lot of good stuff, unpacking a lot of great content, a lot of moving speeches, a lot of lives transformed. And one of the things that came up was transparency. And this point really got drove it home when I was having a conversation with some friends. Just by chance, I ran into some people that I knew from Fayetteville. So I knew some folks that before I had entered seminary, there was a group of us that were kind of like a bunch of young adults together. A bunch of them were newly, uh, newlyweds. Um, there was me as a, a teacher at the time, and then a few other folks. And unfortunately, I would say about half the people that we knew back then, their lives have kind of gotten off path a little bit, have, have kind of strayed a little bit. There's been a few divorces, some unfortunate turn of events. And then, of course, the other half have, have been doing really well. And it was a small group of us. And one of the things that we talked about that the couple that I was with, the, the couple I was with in Phoenix that I knew in Fayetteville, one thing they said that they had one regret is that at that time, they said they weren't very transparent. They weren't transparent with themselves or with those around them. And they said at that time in their what marriage, they had a lot of struggles. They were in their early 20s. We were all around 25, 26. And they said they had a lot of struggles, but they always felt like they had to put up a front, that they had a perfect marriage. It was kind of funny. I said to them, you know, we actually all knew that you kind of, you guys were fighting a little bit. We could tell because every now and then occasionally something would happen that would kind of indicate it. But it did strike me. That was one of the characteristics of our group that we really were kind of putting up a front many of us, even though we were Catholic, even though we were all about our faith, we always had to present ourselves as being something better and something greater than we really were. And what a tragedy that was for many of our friendships, that we never really learned to go deep as friends. See, one of the things we're trying to teach the college students at ECU, and one of the things that's really lacking within the church is, you know, I've talked about this a lot with discipleship. I've talked about going deep with the Lord. But the question often is also, do you have good spiritual friendships? Do you have people around you? And the saints would say, and the philosophers would say, we're lucky in this life if we had two to three really good friends that we could go deep with. And the reality is, though, so many people don't even have that. They, they hunger for that authentic friendship. And that's what we're trying to form in the, the students at ECU Newman. That sense of being able to go deep with your friendships and discipleship, go deep with the Lord, and to go deep within yourself, to discover God's grace working within I've often said that we have to recognize our own capacity for evil. And we also have to recognize the great things that God wants to do within us. And that's an inward jury that for many is incredibly frightening, that is incredibly scared. They would rather spend their life distracted, spend their life distracted by television, distracted by movies, distracted by work, even distracted by family. What is the latest drama? What is the latest confusion? But are we able to set aside all those exterior things and look within? See, today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. And it's this idea of revelation, that God reveals himself. And there's this sense that he reveals himself to the nations. That's what the Magi represent, that the the revelation of God was not just for the Jews, but for all peoples. But this revelation is not just a series of ideas. It's not even scripture alone. It's the person of Jesus Christ. And when God reveals himself in Jesus Christ, It's about an interior journey, and he reveals who we are. See, he reveals who he is, and then he reveals our own identity, because it is only in Christ that we discover who we truly are. That is why we must make that interior journey. The light of Christ must shine within, primarily. Now, of course, we're called to evangelize. We're called for apostles to the poor. But the question always becomes, if we reach out to the world, we try to solve the world's problems, if we're trying to solve the problem of hunger, of poverty, of racism, of immigration, when we look outwards and we're always trying to fight the world's problems, if we haven't discovered Christ within, we only continue those patterns of racism, of hatred. Maybe instead of it being one group on top versus another, maybe some of those dynamics will shift. See, Christ is the answer to all things. And before we look outward in the world with our mission, We have to first look inward and discover Christ and discover his voice. And then 
when we have found that peace that only Christ can give, then we're able to look outward. Then we're able to be conduits of God's grace. We go to our, you know, our soup kitchens. We have our apostolates. We have the different work that we need to do. And we're promoting some of those things that we need to do. But first, the movement is inward. So today, let the light of Christ shine within your heart through habits of holiness, ongoing confession, daily meditation. Let the light of Christ shine within you. Instead of putting up a front to the world, now sometimes we need to have a front for you know, business, for our exterior relationships, but do you have an inner circle of friends? Do you have an inner circle with your confessions, with your friends, with your time in prayer, where you truly let the light of Christ shine, where you're completely transparent, you're open, and you recognize your need for God? Consider that today. Are you opening your heart to Jesus Christ? Amen.